What's going on guys? This is Ryan with the RK Outpost and last year it was announced that Lucasfilm was bringing in Leslie Headland, better known as the former personal assistant to one Harvey Weinstein, Leslie Headland, to make a Star Wars show. And once we realized that, once we knew her history, once we found out some of the things that she said in the past, not only about Star Wars, but also in general, we realized that she's a perfect fit for Lucasfilm. She's obsessed with race, she's obsessed with gender, and of course she's obsessed with sexuality. And she's going to be putting all of that in full display in her new show, The Acolyte. Look at this tweet by Data Racer. Leslie Headland interview on her new show. Think Star Wars is about politics and fan opinions aren't valid. Hired a writer who has never seen Star Wars and that female and queer representation is a top priority. This is going to be a train wreck. And in fact, it is. We've been saying this for a long, long time. As soon as it was announced and we learned who Leslie Headland was, we realized that this was going to be a joke. We realized that this was just going to be a woke train wreck. Remember when we got this article from Variety? Star Wars series from Russian Doll co-creator Leslie Headland in the works at Disney+. Plus. And the only thing we knew about it was that it was female-centric. That's all. When this was leaked out there, all we had to go on was it's made by Leslie Headland and this series is going to be female-centric. Well, once we started digging a little bit, heard a little bit about Leslie Headland's history, the fact that she was a former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein, who has said vague things about her time there. Very clear she knew exactly what was going on. And before this announcement leaked, she deleted hundreds of tweets. No one's quite sure what those say, but we talked about that nearly a year ago. And we thought to ourselves, well, maybe, maybe she's just, you know, huge into Star Wars, right? Maybe she is just the perfect fit. And so we pulled up this interview from her at the premiere of Rise of Skywalker. Let's hear what kind of Star Wars fan she is. I mean, what kind of Star Wars fan are you? I am the type of Star Wars fan that doesn't even have a favorite movie. I just want to live in the universe of Star Wars mm -hmm. continually in perpetuity forever. So when people are like, what's your, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? I'm like, there is no Star Wars movie. There is only Star Wars. How, look at how proud of herself she is with that answer by not having to give any specifics about Star Wars. Interesting. So when are you writing a Star Wars movie? Oh, please, please, Queen. Queen Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> do you have ideas? So all you have to do is beg, uh, beg Queen Kathleen Kennedy and you get the job because of course Kathleen Kennedy is in charge of Lucasfilm. She is the president of Lucasfilm. It doesn't matter if she's working with Jon Favreau or promoting Dave Filoni or working with Leslie Headland. Kathleen Kennedy is in charge. <laughs> oh yes, oh my gosh, yeah. I think I've had ideas for Star Wars movies since I was 13 years old, maybe eight years old. <laughs> I wonder if all those ideas you had for Star Wars involved basically just focusing on people's gender and their sexuality. If so, maybe that's true. Uh, we can go see the data racers pulling this from AV Club. I have pulled up the interview uh, with this picture of Leslie Headland going into a bunch of different things. Now, data racers has already put out some of the highlights from these interviews. And when you read through the entire thing, it truly is. This is truly someone who is part of the woke echo chamber that all they want to do is put what they think star wars should be into it it doesn't matter what star wars actually is it doesn't matter what fans want to see all that matters is what she thinks this medium should be and that is what she's going to force into star wars there is no doubt in anyone's mind there shouldn't be a doubt in anyone's mind at this point take a look at some of these you know the headlines that came from this when everyone realized that she hired a writer that had no idea about star wars had never even seen star wars before great decision holy shit the acolyte show owner leslie headland explains why queer, rep queer representation in the star wars universe is so important to her as a super fan if you are a super fan of star wars you should be a fan for what it is, or should I say what it was before Disney took over, right? That's what everyone had to go off. So the idea that you're such a big fan that now you need to see yourself represented in some way, shape, or form, that makes no sense. I've been saying that for years. If you are a fan, you're a fan of what that thing was, not a fan of what you want it to be, just to be clear. Star Wars The Acolyte showrunner Leslie Headland isn't worried about the passionate fan base of the franchise when it comes to crafting her show. Leslie Headland explains hiring a writer who hasn't watched Star Wars to help with their Disney Plus series. Holy shit. Let's look at some of these answers, shall we? This is talking about fan feedback and how fans don't want to make things political. And that goes for ideology as well. I mean, it's funny because a lot of the feedback that I'll get, and I use the term feedback very lightly, but when I do go on social media, the feedback is, don't make Star Wars political. I'm like, 
George Lucas made it political. Those are political films. War is, by nature, political. I think everyone would agree there's a very big difference between what George Lucas did with the original trilogy and even the prequel trilogy and what is going on in current day Hollywood when we're talking about inserting politics into these movies. It's very clear. If you can't see that difference, I don't really know what to tell you. Look at this. Now, you had the opportunity to both talk the talk and walk the walk with the show. Obviously, I don't know if there's going to be any queer characters. I can only hope. Of course, this is an activist journalist. We shouldn't be surprised. But you have put together a writer's room. Were there any guiding principles there? in what you were looking for in a writer? There were people like myself who were like later in life Dave Filoni acolytes. <laughs> that makes so much sense. That makes so much fucking sense. I literally had one writer that was like, I have never seen any of them. I've never seen any Star Wars media. And she's texting me before we started the room. She's like, Luke and Leia are brother and sister? What the? Ha ha. That's someone that you decide to hire. Now, I'm not saying that every single person that works on Star Wars needs to be the biggest fan, right? Because that, that's just not necessarily realistic when you're looking at this base of people. I do think that they should have at least watched it, that they have some respect and admiration for it. I think maybe they should have actually seen it before they decide to become a writer on on this grand scale, on this grand IP that has so many different interconnected things. When you're in charge of writing, holy shit. Um, look, and here's what she says about representation. To have the power when you're creating media to just put in certain types of people that maybe aren't necessarily in normal mainstream content or media is just... I know that for people who don't identify that way, it doesn't seem that important. But to us, it's huge. I literally saw an Orbitz commercial with two women going on vacation and I was like, again, crying. It just hits you on a level that you don't know what you're missing. Uh, again, talking about representation. You have to feel that this is speaking directly to you, regardless of what you might be going through, at what point in your life you're going through it. That being said, as somebody that is a lesbian, every time I see gay or queer representation in media, I scream with happiness. And that is the bottom line. It doesn't matter if it's good. It doesn't matter if it makes sense. It doesn't matter if it makes sense with the story and what you're trying to do. As soon as I see a gay person, I scream because it's so incredible. That is where these people's minds are at. These people that are only concerned with race and gender and sexuality. This is why they cannot create stories because they're solely focused on putting in this representation, not for any true purpose, just for representation's sake. This is a huge problem. A lot's changed. This is a question. A lot's changed. But even now, a lot of nerdy or geeky things are often coded as male, often specifically white male. And I say this as a woman of color who every time I write about any genre thing, it's like, well, actually. So again, an activist writer asking these questions. I saw a video, this is Leslie Headland. I saw a video of a little girl dressed up as Rey at Disney World or Disneyland or whatever it was. My wife sent me the video. It was so cute. I'm watching, I'm like, okay, cute. Yeah, got it. But then I just started crying again. These, this is like Kevin Smith level of crying from her. And then talking about characters that she gravitated to. Remember, she couldn't tell us what her favorite Star Wars movie was. She just likes Star Wars. Listen to this answer. Um, probably, I mean, one of the things we did in our writer's room to kind of break the ice was ask, who's your favorite Star Wars character? And you could tell that people, when I said mine, were like, yeah, well, you're gay. That's because you're gay. But it's true. Again, she doesn't even tell us who her favorite is. Maybe she's still trying to decide. I'm not sure. But this is Leslie Henlon. If anybody didn't know who she was, uh, I'm sure you do now or you will in the future. This is going to be an absolute train wreck. Remember what she said about white women. Remember, white women are part of the problem, ladies and gentlemen. I just say that, like, I, I think white women need to kind of step up their game, to be quite honest. Like, <laughs> sorry, but I'm calling, I'm calling you bitches out. Like, um, <laughs> you really do. Because, like, you know, there's, like, we can, I couldn't agree more with everything that that these brilliant women are saying but like I, I'm also seeing the silent killer which is a lot of white women at the top who are kind of reinforcing a lot of old ideas they're they're well that's not going to be Leslie Headland she's not going to be one of those white women holding everybody else back she's not going to be part of the problem she's going to be an ally and this is Lucasfilm this is Disney Star Wars let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below smash a like button subscribe to the channel ring the bell for notifications share this video out there there, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? 
check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.